Hello and welcome to another video and I hope you're all good. So I just thought I'd make a quick video just about a new camera that I'm using, a new kind of film and things, just so I can share some of my experiences and hopefully you guys find it useful. I will leave some timestamps below so you can kind of skip to the bits that you're more interested in if there's certain things that you want to look at. But for those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Ross, I'm a photographer in Birmingham in the UK. I shoot commercial work, but I also shoot a lot of personal work and currently, um, I'm on a little bit of a personal journey kind of teaching myself how to shoot film, how to uh, develop at home, how to scan and edit photos and I'm just trying to share some of my experiences as I go along. It's also probably worth me quickly mentioning that you might want to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave a link below or you can just find me, it's at Ross Dukes on Instagram, just so that you can take a look at some of the images. I do tend to share more, share more of my kind of film images on Instagram than anywhere else, uh, so it might be able to give you a kind of look and feel for the different things that I'm shooting, so there will be a mix of medium format and 35mm on there, uh, and again it'd be great to get your feedback, so don't forget to go and like me on Instagram. So as some of you may be aware, I shoot a mix of digital and analog. So when I'm out doing commercial work or just some of personal work, I'll shoot with Canon EOS R, so I'm shooting digital. And as you may see from some of my recent videos, I recently went into the world of medium format film photography and I've been shooting with the Mamiya 645 Pro. And I have to say, this is an incredible camera. I'm more than happy with uh, how it works, the images that I get from it and really have no faults with this. But I was kind of looking for something that had a nice mix of familiarity and the ease of use of a digital camera and something that would produce that kind of film feel and the kind of look that I've been trying to kind of get with my images over the last few years. And basically stumbled across the Canon EOS 30 and thought, you know, looks interesting. I've got a load of EF lenses. It's an EF mount camera, so it'll take the lenses that I've got. Um, and even though it's 35 mil, which is in some respects a little bit, bit of a step down from medium format, I just thought the convenience was a bit of a kind of, you know, bit of a no brainer. And the best part of this was the actual camera body itself cost me 40 pounds. So for that kind of money, it really was just worth having a go, seeing how I kind of liked it. And if not, it would go back on eBay. Um, but I'm really pleased to say that actually I've enjoyed using it, but more of that shortly. So what I wanted to look at today was the fact that basically I've only put one roll of film through this and already I'm kind of really impressed with the images, really enjoyed the process and thought that other, other people might find that interesting as well. Certainly if you're just looking to get into shooting film, this is a great starting point and as you'll see, really kind of simple to do, really easy process. For medium format and things like that, it's a little bit more complex, a little bit more to think about. And later on in the video, I'll explain where I'm going next with my film photography, which gets even more complex. Um, so let's talk about the actual camera itself. So as I say, I uh, shoot Canon and I'd already got a few EF lenses that because I have moved on to the EOS R, which takes RF lenses, I kind of didn't really think that I'd be using and to be honest, kind of looked to, to start selling some of the lenses. But as I was doing a bit of eBay and looking around, stumbled across these basically what are the, the last in the line of film cameras made by Canon? And I was looking for like a EOS 1N or a 1V, which is the kind of 1DX of the 35mm kind of film cameras from Canon. Uh, and ended up stumbling across this, which is the EOS 30. Now, it wasn't my first choice, it wasn't a, a kind of really thought about process in terms of buying this camera, but it kind of ticked all the boxes. It had everything I need, so it's got also focus, uh, it's a pretty similar layout to, to most modern Canon cameras, so it feels really familiar. Um, and a lot of the functions and stuff that you'd expect to see on a kind of, you know, pretty much, I would say an entry level digital camera, but obviously at the time this was quite an advanced 35mm film camera. So I think it goes back to around about 2004, um, might even be later than that, depending on the model that you get. But a fairly modern 35mm camera. 
And a big selling point for me with this was that it looks and feels very similar to everything that I'd used previously, which takes out a lot of the thought process. A lot of people, when they're first getting into 35mm cameras, will go and buy a vintage 35mm camera, and all of a sudden you've got these different things that you have to think about that just you know, it overwhelms you. There's a lot going on when you're first trying to shoot film. So having that familiarity was really kind of important and really kind of, you know, a huge bonus to me. So the handling, um, the look and feel of the camera was all incredibly familiar and I'm using the 24 to 105 f4 lens which is basically the kit lens uh, with some of the high-end uh, digital cameras and the lens itself worked great it's a good combination I only need to carry this around and as you'll spot I've got the Lee graduated filter on the front which just goes along with the way that I shoot um, so the actual camera itself really pleased with how it looks and feels um, and the ease of use while I was out shooting with it yesterday was really straightforward. The autofocus seems to work pretty well uh, for a camera of its age, so I've got no problem with that. It's actually got some really cool uh, features which I'll probably go into in another video with it a little bit more in depth, but it's got an eye tracking autofocus system, so you calibrate it and depending on the autofocus point that you want, if you look at it, the camera will actually snap to that autofocus point, which I only briefly experimented with, but seemed to work quite well. Um, and that's one of those things where you go, I'm not sure why they didn't take that into their digital cameras, but like I said, I'll probably do a more in-depth video about the actual camera itself at some point. Now the other important thing about what I was shooting was the actual film stock. So I decided to buy some cheaper 35mm film just so that I could put a few rolls of film through the camera, see how it looked and filled, um, and went with uh, Kodak Ultramax 400. Now I got three rolls of this for around about £12, which I thought was a bit of a bargain considering some of the prices of film stocks. And while I've been going through this process of shooting film, I've picked up a load of Portra 400, um, I've got some Kodak Gold, um, Fuji uh, C200, loads of different film stocks I'm going to be trying out. So do make sure you subscribe to see some of my experiences with different film stocks. Um, but as we'll look at the images in a minute, I was really pleased with the actual colours that I was getting from the, uh, from the film itself. Uh, the, the range of tonality and basically the, the dynamic range within the film really kind of surprised me and again for what is classed as a bit more of a budget film um, it did a fantastic job of basically retaining highlights um, not as much with the shadow details but certainly more than enough to, to kind of use and the, the clarity and sharpness and stuff seemed great but again that goes back to the, the actual lens and things that I was using um, so the film stock's been really important and the Kodak Ultramax as we'll look at the images in a minute uh, again, just really impressed with. Um, so that was a good choice. So the next stage was the actual developing stage. And again, I'm gonna do a separate video about this because I know that I said that I'd do it with medium format. So we'll make a video about this, but I actually developed the color negatives at home. And I use a C41 process uh, where you get the chemicals and basically making sure that everything's at certain temperatures and for certain durations, you'll go through the processing um, stages with the actual film. Now, I recently had a bit of a problem. I think the, the previous chemicals that we were using had basically gone off or something wasn't quite right, but basically ended up destroying a roll of film. Um, so I had actually changed my chemicals yesterday. So I'd been out to shoot in the morning, uh, remix my chemicals, a fresh batch of chemicals, and I'm using the Tetanol uh, C41 kit. Uh, so a mix of chemicals, and this was the first roll of film that I'd put through the chemicals, which is always a little bit nerve wracking, but the images came out great, and I'm more than happy with the actual C41 process. Uh, like I said, I'll make a separate video about this, but if it is something that you're looking to do at home, I strongly suggest having a go, but obviously just putting some cheaper film through the first few times that you do it while you're actually learning the process. Uh, the next stage after that was the scanning stage. And I've got an Epson V600 scanner which can do 120 film or 35 mil. Now it is quite a slow process, it probably took me a few hours to, to scan the 36 images um, and when you're actually scanning them you do small adjustments on there to make sure that you're getting the best possible, possible image out of the scanner. Um, 
making sure everything's as sharp as you can get it and the colours and things look um, you know, the way that you want them. And that's the first stage where you really start to see the quality of the film that you're using. And even at that point, I was really pleased with some of the, the images that were coming straight out of camera. So um, the, the colours looked great, the sharpness was there. I do have a bit of a problem with this 24 to 105 lens. Um, one of the reasons why I stopped using this a number of years ago was it just seems, the, the focus limb seems slightly off and I had dropped it and I think I might have damaged it somehow. So one of the next things I'm possibly looking to do will be to buy a 24 to 70 f2.8 if I think I'm gonna be using this camera quite a lot. So some of the images did look a little bit soft, um, but I don't believe that's the actual film stock. I think the film stock itself seems to hold up pretty well. So I do think it was just the actual lens itself. Um, but again, so once I've gone through the scanning process of actually getting the images onto the computer, then I take them into Lightroom and do the edits. Now, I am the first person to admit I do have quite a heavy hand when it comes to doing the edits, and I do have a certain style that I kind of shoot. Um, so, you know, certainly going out at sunrise and sunset, and I do tend to col uh, push the colours a little bit too far. But it was really interesting just to see the actual dynamic range that the film had itself, uh, how much of the, the highlights that I could recover, which was fantastic. With film, you actually tend to shoot for the shadows and try and recover as much detail in the shadows as you can. The highlights are actually pretty easy to recover. It's kind of like the opposite of digital. With digital, you tend to lose highlight detail pretty easily and be able to recover shadows. With film, you tend to lose shadow detail pretty easily, but you're able to recover the highlights. Um, but again, with the, uh, the actual editing process, it's just a case of pulling the highlights back to where I wanted them and lifting the shadows to where I could to see what I could, information I could gain. But again, I was pretty pleased with the kind of images that were coming out. Now, the other thing to say about these images is that basically it was just a quick Saturday morning run round. There's no real kind of, you know, thought gone into composition and things like this. These are definitely not the best images I'm ever going to take. Um, but I did just want to put the roll of film through the camera. Now, what you'll see on the screen is obviously a little bit of an unfair representation because you're looking at compressed images in a video format and they're probably not going to show it off in the best possible light. And again, I've looked at some of these and they do look slightly soft. But one of the big selling points to me about shooting film is some of that softness and some of the kind of accidents that you have with film uh, the misfocuses, uh, the, the kind of like, like I say, the kind of softness to it, the grain structure, all of those things kind of add to the nostalgic feel for me. And again, I can perfectly live with them being ever so slightly out of focus or the grain structure being kind of very apparent because that does give it the kind of nostalgic feel that I want to add to my images. So overall, I think the for the first roll of film that I've put through the EOS 30, I'm really happy. The camera handled everything fantastically. It was easy to use. Felt just like shooting a, a normal 35mm camera. Um, the images that were coming out from the film stock, so the Cold, uh, Kodak Ultra Max, Really pleased with it, to be honest. It's actually a really good uh, film stock, even though it's a little bit more budget. Can't wait to try some of the Kodak Gold, certainly at the sunrise, sunset kind of shots that I take. And obviously the Portra 400, I don't think I need to say too much. We know that that's a fantastic film stock and it's pretty much everyone's go-to film stock, so I have no issues with that. Um, so pretty good experience. The actual scanning and developing went pretty simple as well, so not too, not too concerned about that and can't wait to get out and shoot more with this 35mm camera. However, I did say at the start of the video that I'm actually looking to buy a new camera and change and basically make everything slightly more awkward for myself. And I've already put an order in with Intrepid Camera Company for a 4x5 camera. So like I say, really enjoying shooting medium format. I'm really pleased with some of the images that I'm getting from medium format. And for some unbeknown reason, I just decided to order a 4x5 camera. Um, 
which is going to be an incredibly different process to shooting 35 mil and 120. Uh, you know, I'd be lucky if I come home with one decent image every time I go out and shoot. And obviously, you've got the cost and everything else, and also not being able to process and develop at home. But again, there will be separate videos for that when I actually receive the camera and go out for the first time. So if it is something that you're interested in doing yourself, shooting 4x5, please do subscribe to the channel, share your thoughts and feelings and stuff, and we'll see how we go along together with that. Um, yeah, so that'll be an interesting one. So I hope you found this video kind of useful, in particular if you are just looking to start shooting film. Um, I think a camera like this really bridges that gap between not being overly complex, not being too uh, unfamiliar that you don't know what you're doing with it, yet still being able to get that really nice film look and the kind of textures and images that we, we want to produce and the reason that we're actually shooting film to get that nostalgic feel. Now there will be more videos to come similar to this so please do subscribe if you've if you've enjoyed it but more importantly what I'd actually really like you to do is leave a comment below uh, if you're shooting 35mm 120 or even 4x4 um, just telling us about your experiences, what you like, what you don't like, and also what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. If there's things that you'd like me to cover and help out with, I'm more than happy to try and share my experiences. But I do hope you've enjoyed it. Do check out my Instagram to see more of the images so you can actually take a little bit of time to, uh, to take a look at them. And obviously, I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.